Hello guys, welcome to Expert Razor Academy. So today we're gonna to see in Microsoft Project uh, there is something called Work Breakdown Structure. So what is Work Breakdown Structure or else WBS code and why do we need it? So the Work Breakdown Structure is basically the very first basic step that you do when you're creating a project. And um, so the main thing that we use that um, into your project is to identify the task unique task individually because if you try to identify let's say there is task 2 that if you want to say okay uh, to another staff member uh, that the task 2 having some issues so now let's say if there is another project which also because if you imagine if you're doing a if you're a construction company if you're laying payments and the task name is laying payments and if there is another project which also has got the same task and which is called laying payments so now people might actually misunderstand you uh, thinking that you're talking about project two instead of project one. So these sort of confusions might happen because you're talking about uh, things which could be possible that it could exist in other, other projects as well. So with the WBS, what happens is you actually create a sort of like a unique code uh, for each of those tasks. So you can actually identify it and you can actually, uh, let's say whenever you send an email, you can include that code in uh, in the in the project statement and or in the email subject or somewhere. So people can uh, understand which exactly the task that you're referring to. All right, so to, to do that, the so very first thing that we need is uh, in your project, um, Microsoft project, as soon as you get into the project. So go to the project tab. So right now you will be under task tab, go to project tab and there is something called WBS. So the WBS defines or renumbers the project breakdown structure. So this actually gives you the code for the project uh, breakdown structure. So now this can be an alphanumeric number. So that means it can have text as well as number, but it should have one incremental number field so that it can actually increment automatically. So now I'm gonna click on define code. So the code defining process Sometimes it might be a bit tedious when you think about it, how these things gonna work. Uh, but as you start using it, you, you'll get comfortable. So my suggestion is keep it simple in the beginning and then you can make it complex as you go. All right, so the very first thing is uh, you can choose the type of uh, field that you wanna add. So let's say I wanna add uppercase letters and it should be ordered. So there is also characters that you can add which can be unordered. So I'm gonna say it's gonna be ordered and length can be any and separator so you can use a dash plus whichever the separator you want to use and make sure that you don't use the slash unless and until it is needed uh, the reason being is let's say uh, these task names sometimes may also you use that in a sort of like a file name let's say if you have a task that says payment uh, payment cleaning and there will be an invoice or some sort of a document which will be attached to the task which will be payment cleaning and if you want to have the file name same as the task name, if you have a slash, then the you know the, you cannot have slash on the file name. Simple as that. All right, so I can choose dash, and um, yeah, that's done. So next one, I'm gonna choose let's say characters. So this one will be uh, I can choose uh, again dash for this one, and it can be unordered. And uh, the length, you can choose how much length you want to have so that way it doesn't go beyond that. It will have a validation. Let's say I'm gonna choose only three characters for these. And then the next one is gonna be numbers. So this will be, let's say, any length. And then the separator would be this one. So now, as you can see on the header, so you can see this is how it's gonna look like. So there is gonna be a um, uh, sequential text and the character number. And then another one, let's say I wanted to have this one to be two characters. And then there is a dash, and then there is three characters that could be something, anything that you want to type it in, and then dash, and then there is an increment field. And now this will say, uh, this button will, if you choose it, will say generate WBS code for the new task and verify uniqueness of new WBS code. That means uh, every code that you enter, every code that is created, whenever you create a new task, it will make sure that it is unique so that you're not actually uh, duplicating those ones. Click OK. And now, OK, we have done that. And where is the WBS code? So now I'm going to uh, insert a new column. As you can see, this is sort of like an Excel. So there is an option to add column right up here, or you can right click and then insert column and then you can say w b yes and then it creates the wbs uh, column 
so now uh, there is also other columns that you can insert similarly so so now there is WBS predecessors successors and all that sort of stuff so you can add a lot of these ones work counter a lot of these columns that you can add as well so now i um, just going to get rid of that okay so now we have inserted the uh, WBS code so now let's say if I actually have a sort of like a, another task which is created uh, so I'm going to say uh, insert another task and you can see it automatically creates a code based on the structure we have defined and um, so you can actually double click on these ones on the task and then you can go into the details of the task which you will see it later and uh, some of the other things that we can do is in the custom fields you can actually change the uh, WBS code so let's say if you enter your own task text it actually shows you it has to be unique and it cannot have these values and stuff like that and um, so typically this is the WBS code so now coming back to work breakdown structure so typically in Microsoft project uh, there is four things that is considered as a work breakdown structure that is the basic element of a Microsoft project or a typically in any project scenario so the first one is a task which is what we see here so all the basic elements which is a task and the next one is a dependency so the dependency is what we said in here that this task should be uh, completed after we finish the first task let's say I want this to be completed after I finish the second task so now you see there is a little arrow that goes in there so that is the dependency so that is the relation between two tasks which is the uh, second element the third element is resources resources can be human resource material and cost resource there are t three types of resources that you can add into a Microsoft project and the fourth fourth one is assignment of resources that means for this task which person is going to work and what sort of materials that is needed to complete that task so those are called resources so now these are the basic elements which is considered as work breakdown structure and uh, the code that is actually linking these things together is work breakdown structure code all right guys so that's it for this lesson and uh, if you have any questions just put it on to the comment section thank you so much